Are you tired of losing against the Sicilian Dragon? Stay with me and I will show you exactly how to crush it. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm chess grandmaster and today we will take a deep dive into my game as white against the Sicilian Dragon one of the most feared chess openings. We will explore some theoretical knowledge, important strategic plans and beautiful tactic calculations. All I ask is that you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to show you an incredible step-by-step -step guide on how to take down the dragon opening. So let's start and this game I was played with white pieces against a very strong player, Mikhail Linker. So we played in chess beer, do you know what it mean? You know like a tournament that you just take a glass of beer, you're drinking it and after it you're starting to play. So you know I'm not drinking a beer so I just take Van Gogh, a vodka. And so I was like, I think after two or three like shots of Van Gogh. So let's see how it goes. So I played with white pieces and let's see e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and g6. This is the dragon opening, okay? This is the position that we realized we are playing the Sicilian dragon with the white pieces. So the first and the best move in this position is to play the move bishop to e3. The point here that you're just uh, developing the bishop, of course, guarding the knight on d4, and the next moves will be f3, queen d2, long castle, and g4, h4, and attack in the king's side, okay? And black really would like to play the move bishop g7 with short castle and try to attack in the queen side something around knight c6 bishop d7 rook c8 knight a5 a6 b5 queen a5 knight c4 something around this so we are with white pieces trying to attack in the king side while black will try to attack on us on the queen side and as you can see we'll have like um white will uh, do a long castle while black will do a short castle so it will be very interesting to see and who will be the first to attack and to bring the checkmate? He will win the game. So let's see how it goes. So play the move bishop g7. And uh, first of all, you maybe can ask yourself why not to play the move knight g4 and attack this bishop. But this is a very big mistake. Bishop b5 check and that's it. After bishop d7, just queen takes g4 with full piece because bishop takes g4 is not allowed because of this pin, right? And um, so after knight e7 exactly the same and after knight c6 just knight takes e6 and I don't know b takes e6 bishop takes and taking the rook I think totally winning also bishop d4 can be played but also bishop takes a8 should be winning position because you're exchange up so after bishop e3 he played the move bishop g7 and now f3 was played because we really like to play the move queen d2 but here knight g4 is very strong because we don't have this bishop b5 as our queen is not in this diagonal so f3 was played now castle and now we are playing the move queen to d2 knight c6 if you ask yourself why not to play the move d5 for example just e5 attacking this knight on f6 and after knight e8 for example just f4 and this bishop on g7 is not uh, good at all and as you probably understand the dragon opening is calling because of this absolutely amazing bishop on g7 but now is not doing anything so it's really bad so d5 is not a good option for black he played the move knight c6 and here there is two options for white to play in the theory first of all is to play move bishop c4 and i played it in the game so we will see it and the next one is to play long castle but here there is a lot of theory for example d5 here as you can see e5 is not allowed because of knight takes e5 so it's bad so the move here it e takes d5 knight takes d5 now knight takes c6 attacking this queen b takes c6 is the only move and now there is some moves like bishop d4 for example e5 bishop c5 bishop e6 you know after bishop f8 just i don't know for, 
probably queen takes or bishop takes but it looks very good for black because you give an exchange but you're attacking here with rook b8 queen a5 there is initiative here a strong initiative for black so here i think the best move is bishop c4 or knight a4 something around this there is a lot of theory and another option here is to play uh, instead of bishop d4 to play the move knight takes d5 but then c takes d5 queen takes d5 and if i'm not mistaken queen c7 is the best move here just uh, give the option to take this rook on a8 but then bishop f5 with double attack here queen takes c2 and also rook takes a8 so this position looks very bad um, and queen takes a8 is not the best move here i think queen c5 uh, but then queen b7 you know you are attacking here the pawn of course and bishop f5 rook fc8 rook a b8 it's it's good initiative i think for white uh, for black of course sorry so I, I, don't, I don't like to play this one so after knight c6 i really don't want to allow d5 so i'm playing the move bishop c4 and here michael is playing the move knight e5 asking me where i put this bishop on e2 or b3 and i decided to play the move bishop e2 and then he played the move bishop d7 long castle and rook c8 until now there are a lot of theory here of course so much games were played in this uh, particular position i played the move g4 as i knew this the best move uh, in my uh, variations and in my knowledge preparation so uh, the point here that i'm starting to think about attack h4 h5 uh, while black will try to push maybe b5, queen a5, knight c4. So after, if we are playing the move h4, for example, black can play the move h5, and then I'm not sure that I have a very strong attack ideas here because g4 just a takes g4, right? So this is the point. So we are playing first of all g4, after knight c4, bishop takes, rook takes, and I will very slowly move king to b1. And this is what i had in my repertoire i remember uh, this line and here i remember that you know the computer says i have a big advantage sorry so whew. yeah i have like uh, something uh, yeah okay for now king b1 of course so he played the move b5 and here it was like interesting option for me because you know black is trying to push b4 queen a5 and attack and I don't have time, right? This is a race and we don't have time to waste. We're starting to play fast. And now, for example, knight db5 is a very big threat, a, a very big mistake in my opinion, because queen b8, for example, attacking this knight on b5. Rook fc8 is coming very fast. And as you can see, this controlling the b2 square, queen is here, the rook is here, the bishop, and maybe also the knight will jump. So it's a very complicated position. So we don't want to play in his side, okay? It's very important. So I played after b5, the move h4, attacking in our king's side. b4, now knight d5, of course, knight takes, e takes, and now queen a5. As you can see, we are playing very fast. We are playing uh, to control the time, and this is the most important thing now, time. And I played the move h5. It was not the best move here. I think knight b3 maybe was a bit, a little bit clever, because you're attacking this queen, also guarding this pawn on d5, and the next move maybe will be bishop h6 or bishop d4. So here, for example, bishop h6 is very bad, because rook takes d4, right? Just a full piece. Thank you very much. Uh, but... Of course, I play the move here, h5, I, I try to open this file and attack this king on g8. So you play the move rook fc8, maybe queen takes d5 was an interesting solution, but don't forget I have another very strong move here, knight f5 with double threat, queen takes d5 and also knight takes e7. So after queen takes d2, knight e7, intermediate check, king h8, and now rook takes d2, attacking this pawn on d6, and also h takes g6, with some big threat here in h file. So rook fc8 was not the best. I think, yeah, the best move was bishop f6, but I, I don't know, it's a very complicated move. Uh, because, for example, h takes g6, f takes g6, queen h2, the point was just rook f7 and guarding this pawn, and now the bishop on g7 is not... Uh, here anymore so bishop f6 is very complicated move of course in blitz right so rook fc8 was played uh, in my opinion is very uh, you know nice move to play you're attacking this pawn on c2 bishop takes d4 rook c2 uh, looking looking strong but h takes g6 
f takes g6 and a queen h2 the only move here you are attacking the h7 pawn and it's very terrifying here for black h6 was played and now only move for white you can stop the video now and think by yourself but it's very nice move bishop takes h6 a brilliant move by chascom thank you very much so the point here that you're just sacrificing a full knight so let's understand after rook takes d4 there is only one move here to win with white pieces and i must admit i didn't see it in the in, during the game of course so the move is rook d e1 slowly move attacking this pawn on e7 bishop g7 with queen h7 queen h8 so many threats here and this is game over after rook d1 but also another option here is bishop takes d4 and here a very nice tactic and of course sacrifice rook takes d4 another brilliant move that i played in a blitz it's not was easy but why because i understand that this bishop is the most strong piece in black position and why because it's just defend all of this diagonal and i really want to exchange it i'm sacrificing the rook after rook takes d4 just bishop g5 or bishop i don't know bishop c1 also looking very strong bishop c1 with queen h7 queen h8 it's a checkmate you know it's for example queen takes d5 just queen uh, h7 king f8 uh, bishop h6 for example king e8 queen h8 king f7 queen g7 king e6 uh, queen takes g6 and i think yeah like this this is the checkmate so as you can see it's just attack with all power because there is nothing here to defend so uh, i thought during the game just to play bishop g5 with queen h5 uh, queen h7 of course and queen e7 and checkmate very soon so he played a move rook takes c2 after rook takes d4 and now nice move bishop d2 just you know protecting this queen from this rook on c2 and the next move queen h7 with rook f4 just checkmate on the board also queen h8 with rook h7 so you know you are attacking with all the power and as you can see white is clearly faster than black so he played the move rook f8 and now queen h7 checkmate on the board against a very strong player around 2950 and you know yeah i achieved a very important win in white pieces against the sicilian dragon opening and i think that you already realized a little bit about the openings theory first of all secondly the plans that we are starting and trying to attack in the king side while our opponent will try to attack us in the queen side and also very important to calculate every single move we don't have time in the sicilian dragon opening see you soon don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe my channel for more chess content See you soon. Bye-bye.